cool is that? Okay, so today we got this new uh, toy in the mail, the Cyrusher uh, e-bike. I have actually never touched an e-bike before, so I am pretty excited to see what this thing does. Wow, this is a lot of bike. Some assembly required. Okay, this must be the battery. Wow, that weighs a lot. Ooh, look at that. A uh, pump, tire pump included, that's pretty neat. battery charger. Okay. I'm actually going to go and plug that in right now. Ooh, almost looks like it's fully charged. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Those look like nice instructions. I guess we'll find out, but I like that. Pedals, we got right and left. Okay, so all that I think is left is really for me to adjust all of the handlebar related things just so that everything's in a good position for me. Okay, so for me, I like it to, kind of, to be more out in front at a slight, word, slight downward angle. So somewhere around here feels pretty good. Okay, well there's this e-bike all assembled. The only thing it's missing is the battery, which I currently have on charge, so in a little bit that'll be all charged up. Um, so far I'm actually really liking this. It looks like a really comfortable bike. It's got a nice seat on it. I, I like that all these adjustments on the handlebars are easy to do. Looks like it's got really good suspension. 
I've never seen rear suspension quite like this before, so I'll be interested to test that out. And this nice rack back here, I mean, good spot to tie your lunch box or whatever if you're going out on a good little adventure there. Oh, we are missing a part. We are missing our front bumper. There we go. I don't want to miss that. So that took me less than an hour to put together. And I wasn't rushing by any means. And I did have a couple of little interruptions. And, you know, I'm pretty impressed with the toolkit that came with this. The instructions are nice, but everything's, everything's pretty straightforward. The only other things that I found that you might need were... Um, I think I used a 10 and an 8 millimeter at one point to fix that light and a Phillips head screwdriver. I might do this off camera, but uh, something that I usually like to do with a new bike is I'll just go around and I will go over everything and I'll check all like the connection points and make sure everything's tightened. But this does look like a this does look like it is very well put together. No click. I like it when things click. I've been so excited to try this bike out, but it did come from factory with a couple of little things that needed to be taken care of. So first off, there are a couple things that were just a drop loose on it. So I went through and tight, made sure everything was tight. Um, this joint here being one of them, there's a lot of unnecessary pivot in this. Um, something else was that the brakes were, one of them was, one of them was very loose. So I spent uh, a little bit today just bleeding the brakes to get it so that both the front and the back brakes were working correctly. And then I randomly had the issue where all of a sudden this e-bike was not um, getting power to the motor and it wasn't actually doing the e-bike part. Uh, it turns out that one of these bolts here was just a smidgen too tight and it was making the bike think that the brakes were applied when they were not so a uh, quick call to customer service a uh, super helpful guy on the phone and had the problem solved in just a couple minutes so i am excited to finally actually give this thing a proper test ride
like some uh, old resorts on this road. This house here came up on the market a couple years ago and it was like a million and a half dollars or something, but it's probably because of that view. I mean, it's like in a swamp. Okay, so we got a beautiful morning here. So we are actually gonna take our Cy Rusher bike out here for a little joy ride and range test. Find the tractor in the background. Work never stops here at the Weber household. So quick overview on, on what we're doing here today with this range test. So I clocked in at about 122 pounds this morning and I tied this bag down to the back. So this bag weighed in at around 16 pounds. So altogether, this bike is looking at a load of around 138 pounds today. Since I've gotten this bike, I have been uh, trying to put on a couple miles so I can give you guys a good review on it. So to turn it on, we're gonna hold down the mode button here. Here's our little screen. So this is our assist here. Zero is it's a regular bike. And the assist actually goes all the way up to five on this. So you can see we are starting at a full charge. Here's our odometer. I've put apparently 74 miles on this. Uh, actually, you know what? Most of that probably is even me. My dad's actually been uh, taking this out a little bit as well. So we have our speedometer and our uh, power outage output here. And you can uh, toggle through with the mode button here and uh, change this here so that here we will be able to set how long our trip is today to see how many miles we put on this thing. And just like uh, you know, a regular bike, you have your regular gear shifter here. So this only has a seven gears. Unlike your standard mountain bike, you only have one large spoke in the front opposed to three. Usually you'd have three in the front and seven in the back. So let's strap our helmet on and see where this thing takes us. So we're going to do this ride with the uh, assist on all the way. All the way up at five. One day when I was a kid, when I was riding my bike with my dad and my older brother, right here at this stop sign, we stopped and I actually found like a 20 just laying on the ground. And it was like the best day of little Sam's life, you know, $20. It's amazing how effortless riding this bike is with it cranked up this high. There is absolutely no resistance in my pedals. So a really awesome feature about this bike is it has is it has this throttle here. So like right now I'm at an intersection, I'm on a hill. Um, so I, I love to use it for this, especially if you have a situation where you need to get out of the intersection pretty quickly, cars are moving fast. I like to just give it a little bit of throttle just to get the bike moving and get me started so you're not sitting there fumbling around with the bike, nearly getting hit by cars. 
This is a pretty steep hill here. Maxing out the wattage. Still barely putting any effort into pedaling though and going almost 15 miles an hour. There you go, apex of the hill and it just takes you right up 25 miles an hour. view the mountains. So this is actually a resort, outdoor pool. This building here actually has a bowling alley in it. And then this here is the resort. They have an indoor pool in there as well. some cool trails here. not know they had a golf course. Oh, this is a steep hill. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I cannot do it. Oh, it's a really steep hill. I made it like a third of the way up. Well, on the bright side, you can use a throttle to uh, help you push the bike up. I didn't know this place had a golf course. Look at that. Look out. 210 yards, par four. There's the rest of it back there. It's pretty cool.
really cool bridge. As much as this spot is beautiful, I think it's time to move on. On this wooded trail here, I actually turned down the assist to one. Because otherwise it's just launching you too fast and you can't control the bike on this rough terrain. to be like actually mountain biking like trail riding is really hard it's kind of tricky with this thing too because it's like the assist is like the assist is both like a blessing and a curse because you're trying to go slow but you're trying to pedal and the assist kicks in and then it like launches you a bit and that's kind of sketchy i don't want to mess up our range test either so i think i'm actually going to get out of here
steep hill I'm going up here. I still have a max all the way out in seven and an assist five. And I'm putting a little bit of work into pedaling, but I'm going up it still without having to downshift. That's pretty impressive. Maxing out the power outage on it though. That eats up the battery, I'm sure. Never been up this road. rode up on one of these bears so the local town does this thing where they they make these bears they're like pre-cast and they have a couple different positions and artists can choose from which one they want and then they're given a bear and they paint it do whatever they want with it it's their piece of art and then they uh places i don't know if they pay for it or if they just choose like hey it's okay i want one in my front yard so then a bear will get placed somewhere will get sponsored by the business or whatever and it'll sit here all summer and people get to come and look at them some of them actually used to have oh yeah they ha they do 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 it this used i used to do this when i was a kid they have a scavenger hunt so number 49 scavenger hunt the word is autumn so you have to write that down your thing and then at the end you submit your you have to go to every single bear there's probably like 50 of them and you'd have to find the the hunt the scavenger hunt word marker down then you can mail in your ballot and uh it's like a raffle you can win something. I think it's different every year. And then at the end of the, the summer, all the bears come back and get collected. And then they actually go to auction and people can buy them. Going up another steep hill here and uh, my batteries just dropped from four to two. because it's pulling out so much juice. Going back down the hill when I'm not using as much, it'll probably jump all the way back up again. Another dead end road I found myself on. That's okay, they're all so pretty up here in the mountains. There you go, going back down, I'm all brakes. Back up to four battery lights. saw something pretty cool. I'll turn around and go look at it. Old stone foundation or something. That's pretty neat. This must have been the fireplace right here. It's amazing, like someone made this hundreds of years ago and it's still here. Like look at how beautiful that is. It's like perfect. pretty cool. It's something you wouldn't normally see just driving by.
interested to see if anyone watching recognizes or knows of this place or if you've been. So right now I am coming up on the Catskill Game Farm. Now it's called the Long Neck Inn. I remember going here when I was a kid. Here's your main entrance to the ticket booth. How cool is that? It's looking a little bit rough. Look at this building here. I don't know if this used to be offices or something, but it's all collapsing. It's pretty sad to see it like this. If 
Mike's definitely getting tired. It's barely putting out any wattage anymore. 120, 160, it won't go past that. I might actually have to start shifting the bike's gears itself pretty soon. Yeah, this, this definitely isn't assist level 5 anymore. Assist 1 actually helps you out more than this. So It is pretty neat though that it's trying to conserve its own energy and, and get you further. Alright, we ran out of beans. Claimed it's still putting out 40 watts, but I got news to you. 40 watts feels like nothing. I have the bike cranked all the way down to 1. Without any assist, this bike is a chore to pedal. On the bright side, I got pretty big downhill section coming up. So that's going to be nice. Okay. Alright, we're at the hill. Well, that's a good stop right there. Output from the bike. Enough power to keep the screen on, I suppose. I guess I couldn't have timed that any better. Because we are home. Woo! We made it. Well, there we have it, 104 miles. Let me tell you, those last four miles were rather unpleasant. Here's the Rusher bike compared to my regular mountain bike. This would be your standard mountain bike. So I'd say one of the big downsides to this bike is just the sheer weight of the thing. If you have to move it around, transport it, or when the battery dies and you're stuck without any help, this is probably an 80 pound bike compared to, say, this one, which I can pick up the whole bike, one hand, no problem. This one, I struggle with too. It's probably an 80 pound bike. But overall, I love this bike. I've had such a blast with it, so now I've put 104 miles on it. Uh, so I think that's a, a pretty good review margin there. So I'll be sure to leave a link down below to the website where you can get your very own Rusher bike. And they also have a couple different models of this bike. There are also smaller bikes available and even a step through model. If you have mobility issues or even for short people, they're probably great for that as well. So I will be sure to leave a link down below to the Rusher website where you can get your very own e-bike. I'd never used or owned an e-bike before this one. And I gotta say, it has honestly gotten me back into cycling. I am far from being uh, in shape we'll say. So the, something really awesome about this is you can start out on say assist 5 and slowly work your way down or use higher assist in different circumstances where you're having a hard time or even use the throttle if your legs need a little rest or something. So so I think that was a pretty good ride. Uh, we started with 74 miles and ended up back here at 104 miles so we put about 30 miles on that e-bike. Uh, most of the time that was on assist five except for the rare occasion and there is quite a bit of uh, different terrain in there mostly rode some off-roading uphill downhill and flat so i think that was a pretty good uh, variety ride so that was 30 miles with 138 pounds of load on the bike so i think that that did a pretty good job well uh, i'm gonna put this on the charger so it's ready for the next adventure till next time <laughs>